G'day. Today I'm continuing on the vice made without a vice. Uh, I had hoped to finish this today, but uh, as always, these things take a little bit longer to do than you, you first think. Uh, this is what I've got so far. So I've got the rails all, all finished. They're down to size. The, the, the rebates in the side, I've got the cross holes. I've got the fixed jaw mounted uh, and down to size as well with holes for the, um, the, the jaw. To, to go on to. So really all that's left to make is the, is the, um, uh, the, the, the sliding jaw plus a few minor parts. One of the first things that I want to do is just take these ends back to being flush with that plate. That'll be reasonably easy because I'll, I'll put a cutter in there, come down, zero on that surface and then just flush those off. So not a problem there. But what I wanted to show here was just, you know, homemade angle plate. Uh, ideal for this sort of thing. Just holds it up there nicely. Um, couple of clamps but once again you know some spaces if you got them wouldn't need to be much it's only a quarter inch thick so even a couple of, of uh, six millimeter or a quarter inch off cuts under there would do it and uh, you're away so you know these angle plates are, are handy things if, even if you only use them occasionally and that's one of the reasons I'd I'd recommend making them up just so that for these sorts of occasional jobs you have something First out in the angle plate. Uh, with these sorts of things you, you do need to get um, the hang of the characteristics of them. I had it just uh, bolted down there and there and I think it was twisting a little bit and so I probably should have had a few more bolts. I was also cutting um, away and I tried cutting this way as well and that didn't, it didn't like it too much either. You, this, this flexed quite a bit particularly when it got to the end of the material and the, the cutter hooked. So probably for a, an angle plate like this, which is just lightweight, uh, I'd suggest you know going across would be a much better move. Um, if you're thinking about making some of these, yeah, and, and you want to use them for something a bit more heavy duty, then possibly think about putting that brace in there. I've got my vice base here. I've milled off the ends. I'm now going to take that material off the top, and then I'm going to put a couple of rebates in here. I've got that trammed in so that my cutter will be going when I'm when I'm feeding here this cut the, the cut I put on here for the rebate will be parallel with the side now that's not horribly important but it means what I can do is if I'm putting this on the on the table I can put a square on there and know that uh, whatever I'm squaring that up to which you know if it's orientated this way it'll be this edge of the mill that the vice jaws will be parallel with that um, it's not something that's highly important but then again uh, you do want it so that if you're taking a, a, a cut, you know, you have something in the vise and you're taking a cut, you want that cut to be relatively parallel. Um, if it's really important, then you, then you have to tram your vise in. I finished all the machining on this face of the vise, so just to recap what I've done, I've taken uh, these two rails down to an uh, inch and three eighths. I've got a, uh, a rebate in here which is uh, 63 thou that way and 125, so eighth of an inch thou down this way. Then I've put a groove in here three eighth wide and three eighth in from the ends there and that's a quarter inch deep and I've just managed to, to to clean off the the, uh, the ends of my temporary screws so I'm pleased about that because it means I can reuse them. Um, what's going to happen next is I have to make up the fixed jaw. Uh, that'll be rebated here and it'll use a similar technique to what I used for the um, uh, the T-nuts. Then that gets drilled out to M8 all the way and uh, probably be spotted through uh, but then drilled and tapped so that I've got a, a jaw that's sitting there and 
fingers crossed the um, and the machining gods smile upon me the the surfaces here will be flush so that uh, you know from there up to the end of the jaw is is square the only other major part to do is the is the sliding jaw and that'll fit in those rebates and that's what gives it its it, the, the guidance so it's important that those are, are parallel and it's important that this is is square to uh, those you know I'm trying to be a bit clever whether it'll work or not is another matter however on this is this is the fixed jaw uh, and the finished size here is uh, one and three eighth inches three quarters of an inch wide and uh, in, uh, three and a quarter inches wide so it's going to it's going to sit up there like so what what Rudy's notes say is make it like that clamp on the edge there come in put that that groove in and then turn it around and do the same thing and there's nothing wrong with that but what I've done is I've used a couple of uh, of my tie down clamps here as fences and once again you can use whatever you like really clamped it down like that and cut that groove and then I'm going to flip it over that way and cut that groove and the reason I'm doing that is I also need to take this to length so what I'm thinking is after I've done those two grooves and that's a nice fit I can jack that up on a couple of parallels clamp it down again and just face the ends off that's that's the idea anyway um, the notes say make it you know a nice fit so that it's it's parallel with that uh, and you need that later on for drilling the the cross holes but um, yeah that's that's just the way that I've decided to do it so it might work I hope it does uh, it may not but we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, the other idea is if I if I check that up on parallels I can check that thickness with a micrometer and make sure that I'm, I'm spot on because you want a you want a nice neat fit once that's done it's a matter of then drilling and tapping some holes in there uh, and clamping that all down now once that's all clamped down I can then uh, take that down to the height that it needs to be because I can then clamp this down again and just run a cut across the top uh, and so that that solves a few um, uh, hold down issues for me this is the setup I used for squaring off the ends I had the the part up on the parallels uh, so I could measure that thickness and I, I put that in and then I took a clamp which was back here mirror image of that one uh, put this one on and took that one off you know did this side and, and actually I did that side first and then did this side sorry but you get the idea um, so try not to move this thing so keeping yeah. you know at least two clamps engaged um, I'm now going to take this up just sort out the edges here uh, generally when you're getting an edge kicked up like that it means the cutter is a little bit on the blunt side and that's probably true but it's a question of you know how, how blunt do you put up with so I'm going to try that in the in the slot and uh, see how that goes and if that works uh, then I'll probably uh, drill spot through tap all that sort of thing to get my fixed jaw in place I can then put that back on and take that jaw down to the right size I've taken my jaw to width um, did a little bit of work with the file just to, to help it sit down properly I've now place that on there and got it so that the edge of the plate and the edge of the jaw are, are basically square okay and uh, I don't really think there's any good reason for that but that's uh, that's what the instructions say to do and I can't give a reason why not to do it so that's what I'm doing um, certainly when it comes to drilling the holes in the sides here that will help because it means I've, I've then got a, a third support now I was talking earlier about spotting through and how I don't particularly like doing it and this is a, this is a, a, a case in point this is a bit of a 6mm plate the screws uh, are probably the, they're an 8mm countersunk so they go down about 5mm but there's not much thread going right up to the head so you probably need all of that plate thickness to um, get through so there's not much to spot on this particular um, bit of plate Nevertheless, I'll go through with a with a, uh, a an eight millimeter drill and just put a an imprint, shall we say, on the the jaw before going back with the tapping drill. One thing to uh, to note too is in in Rudy's instructions, he says, you know, 
do your countersink screws and they'll line everything up. Now, unfortunately, a countersink screw is going to pull things to the center of that cone. Um, and so if you've got a tapped hole down here and you've got a countersink screw up here, the cone and the, the tapped hole are going to be lined up. Doesn't matter what you think it's going to do, that's what's going to happen. So uh, one thing to think about when using, when using countersink screws. Um, it's one of the reasons I, I try to avoid them if I can because you don't have any wriggle room. Uh, you've got to be spot on with where your holes go. Anyway, I'll spot through with, with a, uh, an 8mm drill just to put a dimple in there and then I'll drill with a tapping drill uh, and put my, um, my screws in and that'll, that'll then be the fixed part of the, the, the or the, the fixed jaw done except for taking that down to height. I've got a bit of a problem here. Um, and it's partly due to me putting, making this thing metric rather than imperial, partly due to my, should we say, lack of precision uh, and a few other things. But what I've done is you can see here these holes aren't centred on the, on the strip uh, and they should be. Well, according to the drawing they should be. You can see the threads there on the side here where it's, it's, it's pushed the material out. If I put that back in the, in the vise uh, that's going to have the effect of pushing that in and make that thread um, very tight and it's too long to get a tap down there so I'm, I'm, I'm basically stuck with it. However, there is a, a way you can get around that and I've done it before and I'll, I'll, I'll explain how it works is if you get a bit of material and I'm having to put a bit there because there's a step on that side too and another piece there put that in the vise, that should crush that back to where it should be. Then you can run the tap down again and just take out that tiny little bit of material that is, is causing the grief. Uh, I guess in this particular case, because the thread goes down to about there somewhere, you could also just machine that out or file that off and it wouldn't really matter too much. But that's, that's one way of getting around that sort of, of thing. Uh, typically we say when, when putting a thread near the edge of something, you want at least one hole diameter in from the edge. Here that's not possible, and this is what's resulted. This is the uh, really approved setup for drilling these cross holes. Um, the the amount of stick out here is is uh, uh, three eighths, and I've got a bit of three eighths tool steel under there and a bit of a packer because it's not quite three eighths. But don't tell anybody. Uh, and then it's just a matter of coming down and drilling holes. Now Rudy has said something that I find a little bit odd, and um, you know you be you be the judge of this one. Uh, and he said that, oh yes, you know, ream these or bore these these holes out. Now, if you haven't got a mill that's that's you know well equipped, that gets a bit difficult because certainly uh, a six, a, well, five eighths or sixteen millimeter ream, whatever you're using, um, is not the sort of thing that I'd say is on your instant to buy list. In reality, it doesn't matter because all that's got to happen is that that. Um, the the nut that's going to you know the thread that's going to be in there has to be able to sit in that hole, and that circumference applies some bearing pressure here. Now, if that's a little bit uh, oversize, I don't think it's really going to matter. It's still going to pull up against the uh, the steel there. I mean that that doesn't there because it's not to size. Um, so you know what you could do is, as I've done here, drill out with a a 15.5 drill. Uh, if you've got one of those and then go back with a 16 and they get you a, a hole that's reasonably close. If you want to drill straight down to 16 you could probably do that without any drama. And there it is, today's effort. So I finished off the, uh, the tops of the rails and, and took them down to height. Uh, put a groove in there which was perpendicular to the, 
that edge and then made up the jaw there set it up like so for drilling these cross holes uh, these these cross holes are um, five eighths down from the top here and uh, inch and then three quarter inch spacing along uh, there's five of them uh, that got taken down to uh, inch and one eighth so just a little bit over 38 millimeters uh, the holes for the the jaws I put in previously before I put that in place uh, I'll probably go back and put those bolts in with some Loctite but I thought I'd just leave them loose at the moment just in case I needed to do anything um, you know take that jaw off or anything like that uh, but the next thing to do is the fixed jaw there's quite a bit of machining in that one so uh, I haven't got time for that one today unfortunately so uh, we'll see how we go but there you go that's um, stage two of, of Rudy's Vice thanks for watching see you for the next one